Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to create abstract geometric line art using GIMP. I'm using GIMP version 2.10.30 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. <laughs> Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIM 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can get access to additional content by becoming a DMD Premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Alright, so here we are inside of GIMP and you can see some examples of this geometric line art that we're going to be creating for today's tutorial. So I'm going to start off this process by creating a brand new document and we can do that by hitting Control N on the keyboard or Command N I believe on a Mac. And I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080 and click OK. And it's just going to use my background color here as the color for the background of the composition. And if yours looks different, don't worry, we are about to change it. A quick note though is up top here I have my layers panel and below I have my paths tab. And the paths is usually next to the layers panel, something like this here. All I did was click and drag this below and you'll see a little highlight around brushes. Release your mouse and come back up top here. Make sure you're switched over to the layers panel. And now you can see I have my layers and my paths open simultaneously and that's just going to make things a lot easier as we go through this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is create some center guides and I'll do that by going to image, guides, new guide by percent. So I'll keep the direction set to horizontal and the position set to 50 and click OK. So to repeat that I'll hit Control Shift F or Command Shift F and change this to vertical and click OK and now we have some center guides. So if I hit the G key on the keyboard that's going to grab my gradient tool. I want to fill this background layer in with a gradient. So coming over here, my foreground color is set to this red color. You can copy my HTML notation if you want to use the same colors. And then right here I have my orange color. Again, copy that and I'll click OK. So for my colors below here, if you click on this little gradient icon, we can go with foreground and background HSV or foreground and background RGB. These are pretty similar so it usually doesn't matter. And then under shape we have the option for radial so I will keep this set to radial and I'm going to click on the middle here and just drag outwards to draw my gradient and I'm going to drag it way off the composition here because I don't want it being uh, too much red in the corners. So that's going to lighten it up there and once I'm ready I'll hit the enter key and now we have our gradient on our composition. So now let's get into creating the actual shapes here and this is going to be the meat and potatoes of this tutorial. And so what I'll do is come over here to the layers panel and click the create a new layer icon. And I'm going to name this shape and come over here and click OK. And from this point we can either use the selection tools here inside of GIMP for the simpler shapes such as the rectangle or the circle or I can use something called gfig by hitting the forward slash key on the keyboard and type gfig and this is basically like a geometric shape generator built into GIMP. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the gfig feature so definitely check that out if you haven't already. And what I'm going to do is inside of gfig here I'm going to uncheck stroke and for fill I'll just go with color fill. I'm going to also choose show grid and snap to grid. That just makes it easier to align the shape here so it's facing right side up. And it's kind of hard to see with these icons in dark mode but it says here create regular polygon. Click on that option and for sides you can add as many sides to this polygon as you want. Three is a triangle, five is a pentagon, six hexagon. So let's go up to eight for an octagon and I'm just going to click and drag my mouse and if I move my mouse up you'll see it's going to snap to the grid and it's facing pretty much straight up and down if you want to call it that. We have the top point here right along the grid, same with the bottom. And if you look over here in my composition you'll see the octagon there now. So let me come over here and hit close. So this is a little off center now which is fine. What I'll do is on the gfig layer I'm going to go to layer, crop to content, 
That's going to crop the layer size down to the size of the shape. Hit the M key on the keyboard to grab the move tool. And I'm going to click and drag this until it snaps right there to the center. So once we've done that, I want to create an outline from this G fig shape. So I'll come over here and alt click on the G fig layer, which creates a selection. I can also go to layer transparency and alpha to selection. That'll do the same thing. So now in my layers panel, which we have open over here, I'm going to convert the selection to a path using selection to path. So there you'll see our octagon as a path. So I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. So now we have our path selected here. I do want to change my foreground color that's being used right now. So I'll click on here and go with this gray color here. You can copy the HTML notation and I'll click OK. So on this path, we're going to come over here and click the icon labeled paint along the path. Make sure you're on your shape layer here though. So come over here and click on the shape layer in your layers panel. And then we're going to click paint along the path. And I'm going to increase the size of the line to 20 for the line width and everything else I'll leave the same. So stroke line, solid color, anti-aliasing, and then 20 and click stroke. So now we've got this stroked octagon. So let's come over here and hide the G-Fig layer. All right, so the next step here is where the magic happens. And we're going to start on our shape layer by again cropping to content. So I'll go to layer, crop to content. And now we're going to hit the forward slash key on the keyboard and type recursive. So here we have the recursive transform tool. So I'll double click on that. And by the way, the forward slash key is the same as going to help search and run a command. You can see the forward slash key right there. But we're on the recursive transform tool. So this tool is going to allow us to recursively transform any layer that we're on with that being the shape layer here. So I'll hold control and shift first. You have to do the key modifiers first with this tool. And for example, what I can do is I can hover my mouse over this corner here You'll see my mouse pointer is going to change to the scale tool. So there's the rotate tool. There is the scale tool. So these handles here are basically like the unified transform tool handles if you've ever used that. So now I can click and drag this inwards while holding control and shift. And you're going to see it's going to recursively transform this and I can release my mouse. And you're going to see over here, it says iterations. Right now it's only set to three, which means this is going to repeat the shape three times, but I can increase this by however much I want up to 20. And I do hope they add more than 20 in future versions of GIMP, but right now it is locked in at 20. Uh, so if again, I hold the control and shift keys, and by the way, that is going to lock the aspect ratio as well as scale this or transform this along the center here. That's what those key modifiers do. So I'm going to hold control and shift and I can scale it inwards more if I want and release my mouse. And if I release the control and shift keys, you'll see here once again that my mouse pointer will change to the rotate tool. So I'm going to click and drag with the rotate tool. We don't need to hold any key modifiers for this portion, but you can see that as I click and drag, it's creating this really cool spiral effect here and each iteration is spiraling off the last one and that gives you this really awesome optical illusion. And something else you can do with this is if you come over to fade color, you can click on here and you can, uh, for example, change the color entirely. So let's say you wanna go with red, you could change it to red. You can also decrease this, the alpha value and that's going to basically allow this to slowly fade to the full red color as it goes closer to the center. So you can get some really cool color effects there with that. You can also go with something like white if you want and again, adjust the alpha value of this. So definitely you can play around with that and get some cool results. I'll hit cancel. I'm just gonna keep this set to where it's at. You can also adjust the fade opacity here if you want to and that will make it more transparent as it goes closer to the center until it becomes totally transparent. So once I'm done with that, I can come over here and click OK. And now we have this really awesome shape here, this geometric line art. So I'll demonstrate this feature again, but using sort of a different combination of shapes. So we'll come over here, we're gonna hide this shape here and click to create a new layer. 
And this one I'm going to rename circle and hit the enter key. So let's come over here to the ellipse select tool and I'm going to click and drag this from the center and if I hold control and then hold shift it's going to allow me to draw this from the center while also locking the aspect ratio to one to one and that's what gives us the perfect circle. So I'll release. I can always click and drag this to make sure that the center snaps to our center guides there. So now what I'll do is come over here. I'm going to convert the selection to a path. Control shift A to deselect that and making sure we're on our circle layer. I'm going to paint along the path and again we'll keep the settings the same and hit stroke. So there we have our circle and next I'm going to come over here and go with rectangle select. And I'm going to come over here, make sure the mode is set to replace the current selection there. And I'm also going to create a new layer and name this square and click OK. So on this square layer, we're going to click and drag the square shape, hold control and shift. And we're going to draw this until it basically just touches the circle there and release our mouse. So again, we have a selection shape. So another way to paint along a selection or stroke a selection, as my viewers pointed out in one of my other tutorials, instead of always converting it to a path first, is to simply go to edit and come down here to stroke selection. And then you could change the size of this to 10 and click stroke. You don't always get a clean stroke out of this method, but when it comes to straight lines, you usually do. So I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. So now we have this square shape on our square layer. Now we're going to go to layer, crop to content, and that'll crop the layer size down. And then we're going to add the recursive transform tool once again using the forward slash key. So I'll type recursive, double click on this geggle filter. So once again, we're going to get the transform handles here. And what I'll do is hover my mouse so that I get the rotate tool icon and just click and drag. And right now we only have this set to three iterations. So I'm going to turn these up. Maybe we'll go to 10 and you can see we're going to get some pretty cool results from this. So you just have to sort of play around with this until you get this in the right position. And then you're going to get this really awesome sort of mesh effect and I'll come over here and click OK. So there is yet another really awesome example of the types of geometric line art you can create using this effect. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.